Welcome back, DigiDs, to another episode of, that's right, Kerbal Space Program 2, where today we are going to be continuing off and kind of with the same concept of our past videos. First, we built a B-52 bomber. Feel free to check that out. Launch. Switch vessels. Then we also went to space. You know, a little boring. Then we tried making a submarine. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Gotta say, quite aggravating. And now today, we've done the air, we've done the land. No, we haven't done the land. We've done the air, the sea, and even space, but we have not done the land. So that's right, today, DigiDs, we want to be building ourselves a little bit of a rover. If we can build ourselves a B-52 bomber, if we can build ourselves a missile coming from orbit, if we can build ourselves an assortment of what was going to be a nice submarine for, you know, undisclosed procedures, then I say we can make ourselves a little bit of a rover. And I have a concept directly in mind. But hey, before we get started, DigiDs, just go ahead and, you know, hey, if you find yourself coming back to see more content just like this, Please, for the love of everything that you hold dear in Kerbal's heart, like the video, leave a comment down below, and even subscribe if you feel so inclined. It really honestly does actually help the engagement and actually does super help me find out if you guys enjoy these videos. It really does help a lot. It really does. I lost control of something. We haven't built anything yet. Oh, Kerbal Space Program 2, how much do I love you? <laughs> we haven't made anything yet. There shouldn't be anything out there. But with that being said, it's going to be off to a great start of this video. So how do we want to do this? I kind of have an entire design already in mind. So I think we're just going to go ahead and go exactly with that design and what I kind of, well, what I have in mind. First, we're going to start off with a whole bunch of truss systems. We need something that's going to be very basic for a rover to kind of roam around on. No pun intended. However, now that I've said it, pun intended. Go ahead and flip this seat around, make sure that we're going there. And parts manager, if you're going to be popping up a hundred times plus in this video, let's just go ahead and move you down. Just keep you off to the side right now. Now, with that being said, also, because we got our very first part here, I think the large wheels are going to be a little bit, well, dare I say, too large. What do we need here? A truck wheel or a rugged medium rover wheel? The latest technology, actually, can I? Yes, you can extend this. Using the latest ruggedest technology, the engineers at Kerbal Motion Development developed the ultra rugged TR21 ruggedized rover wheel. God, that is so many big words. <laughs> this medium rover wheel is tough and rugged, and we just can't say it enough. For the best in off road, off road fun, go with the TR2L. When you need to haul large amounts of cargo or passengers, look at the Rovex TR. The TR4 truck wheels designed for the cruelest terrain. The TR4 is large enough to crush smaller rovers in their tracks. Please don't crush any small rovers. Our stockholders hate that. <laughs> so this is bit of a off-roading tire, but maybe it's not as good as this one. It's just larger, a larger version of this. Well, I mean, I say we don't need to have something that's necessarily so large. So let's go ahead and keep these medium sized looking wheels. Can we get these doubled up on both sides? Oh, game. Apparently not. It does not like the idea of us actually being able to go ahead and split this off. So we're going to have to do this manually. That's right. Manually. Oh, I know. I, I cringe at the word manually, but it's just going to have to work. Is that upside down? I think that's upside down. That makes sense that it'd be upside down because those shock absorbers are supposed to be going, well, the other way around. Go ahead and attach those on. And how do I want to line this up? Because we don't can't double these up at the same time. I think we're just going to be better off taking these and just eyeballing it. That that's really is kind of the best way I can do this, is just kind of eyeball how I want to put these wheels on. Uh, we may as well just go ahead and line them up with the top side of this grid structure, right? With the structure. And that gives us just enough clearance for whatever it is that we may have trouble with. These are nice, rugged, off-roaded tires. You know, I'm actually going to line these up with the very bottom of that truss system. Because I want to give us a little bit more clearance and trying to get over any obstacles. Because I do intend to go a little off-road with this. But we have a few more designs in mind on exactly what this could be used for. Go back to the build mode. Now, how do I want to extend this? I think I'm just going to go ahead and take... Ooh. I think I'm just going to take another small, extra small, and extra small long grid like so. Attach it kind of long ways like so. And then I should be able to just kind of swap this around and just attach it to the other side. If I can remember which way these things are supposed to be flipping. I feel like it's trying to flip around here, but it's not <laughs> it's not liking the idea of it. However, there we go. Come on, just close enough. I'll go ahead and translate this personally. We don't have the snap mode on, so it should be able to go in pretty smooth. 
like so not bad really enjoying that good touch do i want to bring this in a little bit more nah i think we should probably keep this a little bit further away just that way we have enough distance on this whole structure to make sure that we don't end up accidentally flipping over so with that being said as well we're going to take a look at our struts and make sure that uh and make sure this whole thing stays put in one piece. The Kerbal has a tendency to just detach its parts whenever it feels like. Why? Well, because it feels like it. And then really, honestly, there isn't much more rhyme or reason to it. So do we need an entire middle section? I don't think we necessarily do. Like a rover would probably have a whole bunch of science experiments on the inside. And with that being said, ooh, where is it? RTGs, RTGs, there is an RTG. I kind of want to throw these on the front side then to kind of like simulate the idea of it being a science experiment if you guys have played any of Kerbal space program one you know that you have science juniors you have thermometers you have seismic graphs you have a whole bunch of slew of items that you could be throwing on to really just help well gather science and unlock more parts these rtgs i believe do make electricity for us but i want to make sure that we still have electricity so i'm going to go ahead and just throw a bunch of i guess just batteries on the inside make sure we have enough power to be using these wheels and oh one of these days i will learn how to use which <laughs> which way these things flip around okay we only have so many keys there we go only so many keys we can press and still i managed to press all of the wrong ones nice attaching them in very smoothly i don't think we necessarily have to worry about um solar panels more or less because we do have like i said we do have rtgs however this could be kind of beneficial. Why don't we just do something like this? This could almost act like the floorboards of the rover by just throwing on a bunch of solar panels. I mean, I'm not going to complain. It seems like it works well enough. Just kind of attach this in. Uh, good enough. <laughs> good, good enough. Oh, it can also attach sideways. You know what? That might be even better. Are those attached? I don't know if that is attached. I think it might just be hovering there. Hang on a second. I don't know. Is that attached? It looks like they're attached, but are they attached? I don't think they necessarily are. So I'm going to go ahead and actually swap these over, make sure that they are. It, yeah, it didn't seem like they were fully on there, but now we can take this and just kind of translate it over like so. Translate this one as well. We can probably do a little bit less, make sure that we have even ground on both of them and then rise them up to the top like so. And there we go. Now we have a solar panel floorboard. I guess that works well enough and it doesn't need to be completely even. But now let's go ahead and try to throw on the other wheels. That's going to be the fun part because they are they going to be able to function properly. They are upside down right now. Go ahead and flip them around like so. Get the other one. Flip this one around. Come on. Come on. Work with me here. Yes. Yes. Like so. Now, because we did line this all up properly, at least a little bit, this front grate is a little bit above this side grate, but so is this back grate. So we should be fine lining it up with just the very bottom of that truss, just right along that line there. Like so, it keeps it pretty even for us. Yeah, you know what? That's not bad. I think that's a pretty good little rover looking right there. I, I mean, if I do say so myself, which I did say so myself, and I say that it's a good rover. <laughs> you know, that's all that matters. So we want to look at these wheels a little bit. We don't want to look at all those. Those are the wheels. Those are the struts. We need get rid of structure. What is it? Ground? Ground. So on the front wheels, we want steering enabled, steering inverting. We don't think we need that. Auto friction control. I'm not too certain on how the auto friction control or the tracking control or even the suspension works. I know someone has left a comment before, maybe about like, oh God, I don't even know, like a month, month and a half ago, maybe even longer, two months ago on how this did work. And I could not find it for the life of me. So, hey, I will make a note. I will make an actual physical written notes on this episode or when the comments come in for this episode. So if any of you know how to use these friction controls, how to use these uh, suspension and traction control, Leave a comment down below and I promise I will pin it. I will look at it. I will write it down so I can remember for the next video because I know that there is a little bit of a kind of weird, intricate way of which to use these controls to a point that they don't end up accidentally kind of like crashing your rover or crashing their wheels. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens there. Until then, we're flying by the edges of our seat. See how it works. So we have the base form of our rover. Okay, sounds cool. Looks cool. Now, what's the point of it? What what are we going to be doing with it? I mean, what's the point? It's just a rover, right? 
Well, first of all, let's see if it works. Let's see if it even works. I forgot that we are not on the runway. We are on a launch pad right now. Um, you know, I gotta say, pretty powerful. Hang on, hang on, go forward, go forward. <laughs> pretty powerful. It, it does do good for us off-roading, that's for certain. Come on, jump it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, come on. Flip on over. Get over the edge. Get over the edge. You can do it, Bill Carbon. Oh. <laughs> um, um, uh, uh, um, there are parts everywhere. Where did my rover go? It's a little bit over here. And there is a wheel. There is a couple of them. They're all just floating around. Where did Bill go? I think Bill went somewhere over there. <laughs> Only zero meters away. I don't know about that. And there's a whole bunch of something over there. Wow. Uh, all right. Well, Bill is dead. Uh, oh, suddenly I looked very. Okay. Well, I, we need to go back to the VAP. I don't have enough words to even describe what the hell just happened there. <laughs> I have no idea what just happened. However, I think with that being said, I want to turn off the steering on the back wheels. I kind of just want the steering on the front wheels. Steering with all four wheels might be a little bit too much. So here, steering enable. Yeah, get rid of that. Traction control. I want the braking power to be more on the back side, more so than the front side. So that way when we're going too far, we're going too fast, we don't accidentally flip over the front. We want to make sure that we pull on the back side where most of the weight is probably going to be. Looking at the other rover, braking power up to 150%. Did I put the other one up to 150? That's up to 152. Come on. So close. So close. 151, 149. Sure. Why not? It's close enough. Close enough. And then this one is at 149. So they're both at 149. Yeah. As long as they're even. Uh, Let's see. Invert steering. Steering enabled. This one. I want that one turned off. Good. Now we only have steering on the front ones. And it had quite a bit of power. And I'm a little bit surprised. I had a little bit of an oomph to it. You know, let's let's go back to the runway and see how well this actually works when we don't have to, you know, drive off of a rocket launch pad. Okay, well, let's take a look and see what we have. We got, what is on the runway? Oh, hello there. Ah, that's right. <laughs> oh, you got, you caught me, DigiDs. That's right, I have done a little bit of experimenting simply because this game is very broken. I don't exactly know how all these systems work because it is, uh, well, it is still very early access. Come on, turn, turn, turn. I thought it would actually have a little bit more turning radius than this. What if I break right now? Ooh, pretty effective. Nice. <laughs> so you may be getting a little bit of a sneak peek on exactly what it is that we're trying to do. I practiced with a whole bunch of small systems to see exactly what may work best. And you know what? I figured out none of it works. None of it works. So I have something else entirely in mind. There we go. <laughs> Let's go back to the Vabs just to see, you know, I'm surprised at how well this rover actually does work. This is working pretty well. Uh, let's go back to the Vab and see what else we can build. So learning from past mistakes on this save file of trying to see what types of rockets work and how the staging system really works. Cause the problem that I was having a lot when I was testing those types of little smaller rockets was just the staging. It turns out if you detach a rocket, it, I think it's a little bit of a bug in this game, but if you detach a rocket, even though you activate the engine at the same time, it won't actually have the engine fully activated. It loses connection. Even if you throw on, let's say, oh, like you throw on like a uh, a probe core on the top and then throw like on an antenna to make sure it works. You may actually be familiar with that concept on our last Kerbal Space Program 2 video where we made the uh, where we made the B-52 bomber. We end up having to put probe cores and antennas on those rockets to make sure that they actually had connection for us to fly them. Now, a lot of that may have just been because we didn't have proper settings up on these types of rockets that we wanted to do. So with that being said, we want to go ahead and build ourselves a little bit of something here. Now, how do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? Now, the system is, do we want to be dropping a bunch of mines? Does this want to be launching a missile? Or does this just want to be a system of which you can just drop a whole bunch of shrapnel on the ground? You know what? You're right. It should be all of those things at the same time. <laughs> it should be all of those things at the same time. Do we have enough clearance for this? The answer is God, no, we do not. We did not have nearly enough clearance for this. If we go ahead and drag this up and drag this up, 
Honestly, that might kind of work. Uh, maybe? We'll find out. That's kind of the whole point of this video, just to see what breaks and what goes. <laughs> Taking a look at the utility. How do we want to do this? I think I want to detach this at the same time. I want to detach and launch the rocket. That way we can use it effectively however we want. Now, do we want to actually fly this rocket or do we just want it to be, well, something like a dumb fire rocket? Something that just goes and lands anywhere you want. I think let's try, let's try a dumb fire rocket first and see how well it operates. If it works well enough, we can go ahead and probably make it automated afterwards. Turn this around and make it on the other side just as well. And ah, there's Kerbal Space Program 2 at work again of how things do not operate properly. Yes, I will copy this entire system. And yes, I definitely had that engine sideways. That's that's how I wanted to do it. <laughs> you know, that that is just kind of that is the intricacies of this game at the moment. So hey, there is still lots of love. There's still lots of updates that are going to be coming out for this game. And Kerbal Space Program 1, well, it took a long time for it to get to where it is today. Like in its most refined state of how it is today, it took many years to get to his point go ahead and drag down that parts manager again go ahead and as well let's throw on the fuel tank now while i have the chance make sure that this is all symmetrical as possible go ahead and translate this whole thing to the side a little bit it seems like it is a little bit off centered so i may actually want to go ahead and move the other one around take off the snap mode look at this move it over just right in the center keep it all nice and steady that one seems to be right in the middle as well beautiful Take this, move it up just as well. I want to see if I can go ahead and actually get this even with the other one. Is that even with the other one? Uh, not quite. Maybe, uh, looks close enough, I think. I, honestly, I can't really tell. But now this fuel sludge is just a little bit too high. Drag that down, put on a nose cone. Like so, and we should be good to go. Now all we need is a tiny little engine as well. What do we need? A little terrier engine. Don't know if that's going to be effective enough, but it could be. Now, what's the point of having these if it, they don't actually fire forward? No, I did not mean to grab that. Undo. There we go. Rotate and translate. We need these things to actually fire forward. We need these things to go exactly where we're aiming at. So I'm going to go ahead and take this decoupler. Which one do I want to rotate? I think I want to rotate this red with this red piece. Yep, rotate it just this way. So when we launch it, it'll go forward. Not necessarily the best concept in the world, but we have yet to even see how it works. So we'll just see how well it works. <laughs> I mean, I want to add more onto this, but let's go ahead and see if this will even work at all. Not on the launch pad. Let's go to the runway. And we need to check our staging. So we don't need... All that separate we need the rockets and the decouplers go at the exact same time so from my past mistakes what i've learned like i was saying earlier is that what we need look at the parts manager we need independent throttle so that way the second that we actually deactivate or rather activate the engine and decouple these things have a full throttle all the way through independent throttle engine throttle 100 percent that's the mistake that i end up learning which You'd be surprised, took me about an hour to figure out. I went through, oh, hello there. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hang on. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I saw. I, I can't zoom in. How do I, how do I drag myself over? No. How do I drag myself over? I can go up and down, but I can't move over. I need, okay. Take this whole thing. Go over there. Take this whole thing and go over there. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Can I hold shift and move it away from me? No, I can't. I see a little curb in there in the corner. Oh, I wanted to go say hello to him. Just right there, right there. Maybe we can go ahead and zoom in. I'll be able to see in the editing and you guys will be able to see in the video. It's not a very high polygon Kerbal, but it is a Kerbal. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and launch and see how well this thing fails. That's right. I'm expecting this thing not to get very far. Okay, first issue is that the bell nozzles are touching the ground second issue is is that the bell nozzles touch the ground before the wheels do so <laughs> let's go ahead and just launch them you know i'm not necessarily too surprised I, they, they operated a little bit better than i expected i almost expected to be just immediately blown up okay revert to vab we have to move those up just a tiny bit they're a little bit below the ground of the wheels or rather once the suspension takes hold is that they're going down too low Go ahead and raise them up just a tiny bit. 
get back to the vibe like so and we might also want to move them back a little bit as well they seem to be a little four fronts take the blue arrow move it back get rid of the snap mode because else we might be a little bit too close to the wheels drag it up forward a little bit i think we might need to drag it up a little bit further do it try to get it even with the other one as well i'm dragging it too far forward drag it back drag it back up i mean i think that's the closest that we're really gonna get <laughs> that is quite literally the closest that we're gonna be able to get and we could rotate this even a little bit more honestly go ahead and rotate that just a slight more it does keep the bell nozzle closer or further away from the ground not entirely certain but i did realize the engines are not powerful enough so we might honestly need to change out the wheels because if we throw on a different engine well it's just not going to be powerful enough however we could just make smaller fuel tanks now that's an option what do we why don't we try doing that why don't we try just starting over with these fuel tanks we don't need necessarily anything that's going to be that big right we want small little rockets that can get to their destination and deliver a uh, a payload of sorts you know, not going to say what kind of payload, but it's it's an explosive variety. <laughs> Taking a look at our couplings. Throw back on the small coupling. Right there in the center. Like so. Take the other one. Attach it directly in the center. Like so. And let's look at our fuel tanks. We were using this small fuel tank. But we have smaller ones. We even have a tiny little one just like so. Now that honestly might be perfect. That could be the perfect amount that we need. Because that's just small enough that the rocket should be able to lift it up into the air and not go down low enough to be in the way of the wheels. Let's go ahead and try it again. Throw in a little terrier. A little terrier. That's what they're called, right? Yeah, terrier engines. Throw it back on our nose cones. Not necessarily that they're that important. 0 0.051 tons. 0 0.67 tons. Yeah, these will just have to work as they are. Now we go ahead and rotate these around. Ooh, that is beautiful. You know what? That right there. I'm a little afraid of it hitting the wheel. So I'm going to go ahead and just give it just a slight less bit of an angle. I think that's looking pretty good. Take a look at this one as well. Rotate it. No, 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 no. Don't you dare pick another part. Rotate it. That is rotating the wrong direction. <laughs> Rotate it. Rotate. Very gently. I think that's the same angle. Looks close enough. All right, how about we give this another try? Our decouplers did get attached to one another. This decoupler goes to the bottom engine. And that engine goes to that decoupler. Pull up the parts manager. Independent throttle, 100%. The other one, independent throttle, 100%. Very good. There we go. Now let's give it a try and see how well this works. We are on the runway. We have our staging. Let's launch. This should work better. I have high hopes. Just driving along, minding your own business. Da, 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 da. Driving my new cyber truck. You know, it's all stainless steel? Um, question mark? I, I guess it's stainless. It might be steel. Who knows? But all of a sudden, oh dear God, he has a missile. Oh, oh wow. Oh wow. That, that's working fantastically. Oh. <laughs> Launch the other one. We're tilting. We're tilting. Oh, that is working fantastically. Oh, my God. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes. Where are you going to land? Oh, it's actually going. Can I change vessel? Can I change? No. Wrong vessels. Wrong vessels. Oh, God. What is the rover doing? Oh, I wanted to get a vessel look at the default name over there. Did it, did it not crash? Oh, it is still going. Are those engines still going? Can we even drive over there in time? That that thing is still flying around. I wish we could get a better look at it. It just keeps going further and further away. It looks like it came down and came back up again. It it is still going. I, have you? How have you not run out of fuel yet? Oh, you know that we have to throw on. So, oh, we okay. Well, I this is amazing. We may not even need to throw on anything else. We may have found the perfect design right there. There's only a couple more things that we have to add then to make it absolutely perfect. And I'm going to show you exactly that. It's kind of exactly what I was talking about earlier. All we need now at this point is a probe core and a couple of wings. Taking a look at the pods. Let's see here. Probe core, probe core, a tiny little probe core. Honestly, we could even go a little bit bigger. That's 0.042 tons. 
Um, this one is 0.1 tons. So that might be a little bit too much. Definitely probably is, but we're just going to have to work. Throw on the communications right. We're going to need a small antenna on these to make sure that we can actually connect to it. Like so. It seems to be is inside out a little bit. Throw that one on there. Can I? Yeah. Okay. Reattach to it. Regrab it on the outside. Not really sure if it matters if it's on the inside or outside, but hey, I'm not going to risk it. But we also need just a couple of very tiny baby stabilizers. Oh, okay, okay. Let's take these. Let's take the antenna. Move it to the other side. Just like that. And because now, with these little wings... Come on, come on. Work with me here. Is that going to be in the way of the... In the way of the... Oh, that is in the way of the wheel. Maybe if I just offset it a tiny bit. Offset it a little bit more. That might just work that that might just work a little stabilizers i just need something to just control it oh so slightly um you know i'm not gonna argue with it i think that might honestly just kind of work we need uh we need a couple of antennas on this one as well I, it's trying to attach it on the bottom i guess we can just go ahead and put them on single mode we don't need multiple but just for the sake of symmetry throw one right there nope that is facing the wrong direction Face one there, face one there. That should be good enough. I want to see how well this operates with a couple of wings and a probe core. This might honestly be the ultimate design. <laughs> and we can still throw on more stuff too that I have a couple ideas for. So if for some reason it seems the rover likes to kind of like veer off edge and maybe flip over once I'm not controlling it, but that's just going to have to be its own problem. Three, two, one, launch. Launch. No. <laughs> okay, that one did not work as well did not work nearly as well take a look back at the rover again we are kind of tilting kind of tilting okay three two one launch launch you're looking at the wrong one looking at the wrong one get to it get to it yes no <laughs> all right revert the vab i think we need to clear up the runway it keeps changing targets to the wrong ones this is the problem you need to clean up your, your room clean up your room if you have not cleaned up your room right now yeah that's right i'm talking to you Dave, Joseph, Emily, yeah, especially you. Look around your room right now. Is it messy? Oh, you better know it is. You better clean up. That garbage that's sitting over there, throw it out. That empty bowl that's been sitting there for a while, go put it in the sink or something. You got that old, like, ramen cup that's been sitting there? Yeah, I see it. Yeah, I yeah, I see it. Go clean it up right now. It Don't be living in a pigsty. <laughs> Did I... Did I call out any names right there? Did anyone else <laughs> feel attacked? <laughs> so that seemed to actually have a little bit too much of an angle. It didn't seem to have enough time to really get like an upward like draft to it. So I'm going to go ahead and actually tilt these back a little bit more. So that we have more time to switch to it. And with that being said, I am going to go clean up the runway real quick. So be right back. <laughs> All right, Digities, how about we give this a good actual try? Let's give this a beautiful test run. Three, two, one, launch. Okay, change vessel, activate SAS. Oh, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Oh my God, this is actually working decently well. Question mark, it's not quite going up. It's not going up. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, let's not, we don't need to revert, right? We should be fine. Well, that backfired. What about our rover over there? We don't need to revert to launch. Hang on. Okay, fine. We'll revert to launch and see what happens. It is not letting us go back to our original rover. But that worked honestly pretty well. We might need some better, how do you say, wings? <laughs> how about we just try it? We're launching from here. Three, two, one. Launch the first one. Launch the first one. There we go. Activate SAS. Pull up. Pull up. Let's even go up on the... No, can't quite do it. No, can't quite do it. Exit out of there. Let's swip, swap back to our original vessel. Am I too far away to do it? Is it not counting? Come on, switch back, switch back. Can we go to the tracking station? I think we can, Kerbin. Let's go ahead and control our bomber. There we go, now we're back to doing it. How about we try the next one and launch. Activate, nice. Okay, got the SAS. That's what we need. We just needed a little bit more air. For some reason, the one on the left side really likes to just go straight into the ground. 
you know, I, that's my problem. Is that I'm trying to use the wings as though that is my middle ground, but the wings are not symmetrical with what we want to do. So we go ahead and go pro grade. Now we need to go south. We need to go south. I need to start using this SAS module a little bit more to its actual intentions. Oh, come on. Hit, hit your target. Let's just go down. Just go down. Point down. <laughs> I think we need better wings on this. That is a given. We definitely need some better wings on this. Or rather, we need to maybe redesign this a little bit better. Because our problem is, is that we need bigger wings. But we can't add bigger wings onto it. Because it'll be too close to the to the, to the rover in order to attach them. So how are we going to defeat that? How are we going to beat that issue? Well, I suppose... I suppose if our issue is not necessarily going forward, our issue is just going up sometimes. How about we just reorientate this to get it going right, get it above the wheels, like so. Let's get both of these kind of pointed up, get it above the wheels. So it's, it's still attached, but now because it's above the wheels, I can go ahead and attach on some better wings for us. Delete those, take a look at our aerodynamics. Do we want actual... Oh, God, that is the smallest wing. <laughs> that is a that is a little bit too big. What about the small stabilizer? Still a little bit too big. However, we can still throw on these extra small wings and get it appropriate to the way that it wants to face for us. Like so. Oh, God, what just happened? What just happened? No, get, get back on there. We don't need double. We don't need double. Get, okay, it is being funky. Can we undo? Can we undo again? There we go. Now that now it's back on there. So we need to go ahead and reorientate those wings. Don't need it on symmetry node. Need it on double on double two mode, whatever you would want to call that. Nice. Now we go on with the other stabilizer. Now I don't know if that is in line with the probe core and exactly what direction the probe core is going to be facing, but I have noticed we need better SAS with these. We are essentially just making, well tiny little rockets is all it is we're just building tiny little rockets that can launch off of these i mean isn't everything a little bit of a rocket as soon as you throw an engine on it you just got to go fast enough right <laughs> so i can actually probably move those down a little bit simply because we don't need to be so high up as long as i'm clearing the wheels that's all that really matters i can probably go ahead and take off the snap mode move it up just a tiny bit put back on the snap mode to drag this down like exactly like the last one and then turn it off and drag it up a tiny bit. Nice. Now I feel like we got ourselves a proper little, uh, a proper little cargo ordnance deliverer. You know, I didn't mean to be on the launch pad, but however, it does feel appropriate. Are you ready, Bill? He is shaking with excitement. <laughs> this is, this is going well. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Oh god, okay, need to turn on SAS. No, 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 not back into the You know, at least it hit uh at least it hit the tower. Can we swap back to the vessel now? No, it's not gonna let us. Come on, let me get back there. It's gonna make me go to the tracking station and then go back to it. Go to the Kerbin, go to the bomber, control you again. No no no, back up, back up. Nice. And three, two, one, launch! Launch and control. Throw on SAS, like so. Okay, we actually have some good control this time. We have good control this time. We are facing the wrong direction. Okay, keep on going, keep on going. We need to go left. And we need to face up, 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 and left, left and up, left and up, left and up. Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> yes! Okay, so it works. It works! Oh, it, it very well works. Exactly. That's right. Exactly as intended. <laughs> the building was just in my way. It wasn't a target. It just... Who built that? Who put that there? That's just insulting. Now, how do we want to improve this for a final touch? A final touch to the end of the video. How do we want to make this a little bit better? Well, honestly, what good is a rover? What good is a rover and ordnance deliverer if you can't outrun somebody who might be chasing you? You know, it's, you know, or something could be chasing you. What if it's a, a little, a, a cheetah is chasing you? You know, a, you, someone is chasing down a very fast animal. You could be eaten alive, you know? You need to go ahead and get rid of it. How are we gonna fix that problem? Well, with intricate design avenues. 
That's right. Intricate design avenues will help us thwart the evil cheetah that is chasing us. How are we going to do that? Um, uh, with even more interesting designs. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of just spitballing these ideas as we go along. You know, you know, we've never used these before. Would they honestly work? I don't think so. Honest, I don't think so. However, it can still kind of work in concept. What if we just throw it out a whole bunch of these? Even better yet, we don't even need to do these individually. Because if you are being chased all of a sudden, you just want to fill the road. You want to make sure that no one can get to you, right? You don't want to make sure those cheetahs and that cheetah's family can't chase you down. That's right. These cheetahs are a real concern. There's a lot of them around. So you got to make sure that you just throw on something that can get in their way. A whole bunch of yellow orbs. They'll be distracted. Yellow orbs with black lettering on it or black steel looking lines on it. They'll be confused. They'll think maybe you just dropped a cub or something of the sort. That's right. There we go. This should work. Well, how about we get ourselves a little bit up to speed? And by getting up to speed, I mean that we need to go back to the VAB and go ahead and put ourselves on our runway. And I noticed it is getting a little bit dark outside. You know, that is prime cheetah hunting territory. You know, in the dark, in the tall grass, out in the middle of a pavement, you know, runway. Who knows? So we might need a little bit of some lights on here, right? I, I think we have lights. Yeah, we have lights. I, I don't think I've actually ever tried the lights before in this game. I mean, I've never really necessarily had to use them. I mean, it seems pretty beneficial, I would assume. Like so, go ahead and take these and I just automatically turn them on. Not really sure how much they actually illuminate, but um, it's something. And we are on the launch pad again, aren't we? I think I just forgot to put it on the runway again. Ah, DigiDs. Leave a comment down below on how I can remember to not be an idiot. <laughs> and while you're at it, like the video, because you'll be able to see me come up with new engineering avenues in the future. Because I have a few other designs that I want to do. And not all of them, I promise. Not all of them are going to have, like, you know, NATO on your back. <laughs> you know, not that they really do much anyway. Let's see here. Oh, that is a beautiful look. Bill, I, you are a little bright. Bill, are you prepared to experiment with your engineering degree because you have designed something beautiful oh that is a beautiful shadow as well okay oh no look out we're being chased by cheetahs and elephants and the taliban <laughs> that's honestly that worked pretty well I'm, I'm surprised by how well that works part ineffective lack of stellar exposure oh and <laughs> not getting enough sunlight are we you don't say the sun's going down well, oh no, we are being suddenly chased by a pelican? We better deploy the defenses. Oh god, the rover <laughs> the rover is going off somewhere. We are being attacked by a pelican. We need to uh, point down and go towards the pelican. We're being attacked. Make sure we get the expensive cargo away from the dangerous pelican. Who knows what it is capable of. Make sure we just get it far enough away. Deliver it straight into the company window. <laughs> Deliver straight into the company window. Make sure that they get the experiment. Go and go and go and go. Straight into the ceiling. Airdrop it in. Let's go. Onto the helipad. Couldn't ask for a better delivery. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. KSC, go back to the tracking station if the rover is still alive. Let's see here. KSC, bomber, control. Hey, it's still alive. Oh, no. The sun is attacking us. Uh, we need to... Uh, to get it out of here. Oh, no. Oh, uh, uh, SAS. No. SAS. <laughs> well, that backfired. Honestly, oh, as the sun suddenly starts to roam over the territory, go ahead and close that out. I can't switch to the rover, but we can see its lights at work and that beautiful sunset. And by beautiful sunset, I mean that blinding sunset. My God, that is bright. Well, as our little Kerbin, Bill Kerbin, kind of rolls away, and our little cheetah deployment. <laughs> Hang on, let's actually just go to the tracking station. I need to take a look at this. I, we, we cannot end without taking a little bit of a look at this. Go ahead into our engineering avenue type of bomber here. Take it. Now turn, turn, turn. I believe in you, turn. Come on, come on. Imagine if you will, I am a cheetah. I am very yellow. I am suddenly seeing something on the road. Oh no. It, it slowed me down. <laughs> well, as we drive off away from the sunset, Digides, 
I, I cannot say enough that this has been a fantastic episode and I have a lot more ideas coming in the future. So thank you, DigiDees. I'm not sure how to end any of these episodes, but I can guarantee I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye. Now, come on, Bill. Let's go get some ice cream. It's been a really hot day.